Hey guys, so <clears throat> something happened this week. I had recorded 10 whole minutes of um, the fourth video for the one and only Ivan and I was uploading it to YouTube. Something happened. It didn't upload. I had already deleted it from my computer to save room. So that is why we are now two days behind. So I'm really sorry. Um, I believe where we left off was the loneliest gorilla in the world. Um, that's what I read the other day and recorded, but you never got to see it. So I'm going to pick up. We're going to read some more and move on. Thank you for dealing with my little snafus as we get through this virtual learning world together. So the loneliest gorilla in the world. When the Big Top Mall was first built, it smelled of new paint and fresh hay, and humans came to visit from morning till night. They drifted past my domain like logs on a lazy liver, river. Lately, a day might go by without a single visitor. Max says he's worried. He says I'm not cute anymore. He says, Ivan, you've lost your magic, old guy. You used to be a hit. It's true that some of my visitors don't linger the way they used to. They stare through the glass. They cluck their tongues. They frown while I watch TV. It's uh, he looks lonely, they say. Not long ago, a little boy stood before my glass, tears streaming down his smooth red cheeks. He must be the loneliest gorilla in the world, he said, clutching his mother's hand. At times like that, I wish humans could understand me the way I can understand them. It's not so bad, I wanted to tell the little boy. With enough time, you get used to almost anything. TV. My visitors are often surprised when they see the TV Mac put in my domain. They seem to find it odd, the sight of a gorilla staring at tiny humans in a box. Sometimes I wonder, though, isn't that the way they stare at me? Sitting in my tiny box? Just as strange? My TV is old. It doesn't always work. And sometimes days will go by before anyone remembers to turn it on. I'll watch anything, but I'm particularly fond of cartoons with their bright jungle colors. I especially enjoy it when someone slips on a banana peel. Bob, my dog friend, loves TV almost as much as I do. He prefers to watch professional bowling and cat food commercials. Bob and I have seen many romance movies, too. In a romance, there is much hugging and sometimes face licking. I have yet to see a single romance starring a gorilla. We also enjoy old western movies. In a western, someone always says, This town ain't big enough for the two of us to... That's all I mean. This town ain't big enough for the both of us, Sheriff. In a western, you can tell who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. And the good guys always win. Bob says westerns are nothing like real life. Here's his little TV that is in his domain. An old box TV with antennas. The Nature Show. I have been in my domain for 9,855 days, alone. For a while, when I was young and foolish, I thought I was the last gorilla on earth. I tried not to dwell on it. Still, it's hard to stay upbeat when you think there are no more of you. Then, one night, after I watched a movie about men in black hats with guns and feeble-minded horses, a different show came on. It was not a cartoon, not a romance, not a western. I saw a lush forest. I heard birds murmuring. The grass moved. The trees rustled. Then I saw him. He was, he was a bit threadbare and scrawny, and not as good looking as I am, to be honest. But sure enough, he was a gorilla. As suddenly as he appeared, the gorilla vanished. And in his place was a scruffy white animal called, I learned, a polar bear. And then a chubby water creature called a manatee, and then another animal, and another. All night, I sat wondering about the gorilla I'd glimpsed. Where did he live? Would he ever come to visit? If there was a he somewhere, could there be a she as well? Or was it just the two of us, all alone in the world, trapped in our own separate boxes? Can you imagine thinking you were the last person on earth and then seeing on TV that there's another one of you? That'd be crazy. Stella. 
Stella says, she is sure I will see another real live gorilla someday. And I believe her because she is even older than I am and has eyes like black stars and knows more than I will ever know. Stella is a mountain. Next to her, I am a rock. And Bob is a grain of sand. Every night when the stores close and the moon washes the world with milky light, Stella and I talk. We don't have much in common, but we have enough. We are huge and alone, and we both love yogurt-covered raisins. Sometimes Stella tells stories of her childhood, of leafy canopies hidden by mist and the busy songs of flowing water. Unlike me, she recalls every detail of her past. Stella loves the moon with its untroubled smile. I love the feel of, sun, of the sun on my belly. She says, it is quite a belly, my friend. And I say, thank you, so is yours. We talk, but not too much. Elephants, like gorillas, do not waste words. Stella used to perform in a large and famous circus, and she still does some of those tricks for our show. During one stunt, Stella stands on her hind legs while Snickers jumps on her head. It's hard to stand on your hind legs when you weigh more than 40 men. If you are a circus elephant and you stand on your hind legs while a dog jumps on your head, you get a treat. If you do not, the claw stick comes swinging. Elephant hide. Elephant hide is their skin. Elephant hide is thick as bark on an ancient tree but a claw stick can pierce it like a leaf. Once Stella saw a trainer hit a bull elephant with a claw stick. A bull is like a silverback, noble, contained, calm like a cobra is calm. When the claw stick caught the bull's flesh, he tossed the trainer into the air with his tusk. The man flew. So Stella said, like an ugly bird, she never saw the bull again. Here's a picture of Stella. There are some things in this book that might be kind of sad or a little bit upsetting to hear, but um, you can always remember when we learned about Ivan in our true nonfiction story, he ended up having a very happy ending, right? And Stella's a made-up character for this story. Stella's trunk. Stella's trunk is a miracle. She can pick up a single peanut with elegant precision, tickle a passing mouse, tap the shoulder of a dozing keeper. Her trunk is remarkable, but still it can't unlatch the door of her tumble-down domain. Circling Stella's legs are long-ago scars from the chains she wore in her youth. Her bracelets, she calls them. When she worked at the famous circus, Stella had to balance on a pedestal for her most difficult trick. One day, she fell off and injured her foot. When she went lame and lagged behind the other elephants, the circus sold her to Mac. Stella's foot never healed completely. She limps when she walks, and sometimes her foot gets infected when she stands in one place for too long. Last winter, Stella's foot swelled to twice its normal size. She had a fever, and she lay on the damp, cold floor of her domain for five days. Even now, I'm not sure she's completely better. She never complains, though, so it's hard to know. At the Big Top Mall, no one bothers with iron shackles. A bristly rope tied to a bolt in the floor is all that's required. They think I'm too old to cause trouble, Stella says. Old age, she says. It's a powerful disguise. A plan. It's been two days since anyone's come to visit. Mac is in a bad mood. He says we are losing money hand over fist. He says he is going to sell the whole lot of us. When Thelma, a blue and yellow macaw, that's a bird, demands, Kiss me, big boy, for the third time in ten minutes, Mac throws a soda can at her. Thelma's wings are clipped so she can't fly, but she can still hop. She leaps aside just in the nick of time. Pucker up, she says with a shrill whistle. Mac stomps to his office and slams the door shut. I wonder if my visitors have grown tired of me. Maybe if I learn a trick or two, it will help. Humans do seem to enjoy watching me eat. Luckily, I am always hungry. I am a gifted eater. A silverback must eat 45 pounds of food a day if he wants to stay a silverback. 
45 pounds of fruit and leaves and seeds and stems and bark and vines and rotten wood. Also, I enjoy the occasional insect. I'm going to try to eat more. Maybe then we will get more visitors. Tomorrow, I will eat 50 pounds of food. Maybe even 55. That should make Mac happy. I'm going to stop there. I am going to go ahead and upload a second video today since we uh, missed a day because of my mistake. But one thing I am um, that I'm thinking about as I'm reading this story and I'm wondering if you're thinking the same thing, I'm kind of sad for the life that um, Ivan and Stella and um, Thelma and the other animals at the Big Top Circus, the Big Top Mall, that they live. And... Um, I want you to make your own decisions, what you think about Mac, the owner, and how he treats them, but I would, I would dare to say that you're probably on the same wavelength as my thoughts. They're not, they're not living the best life that they should be living, so let's see what happens next. Thank you guys for being patient with my mistake, and I'm glad you're enjoying this book. This is a um, book that you would typically read when you're a little bit older. So I'm glad that you're listening to it and enjoying it. Um, yeah. Thanks, guys.